contemplate just what birth is. Uh, since all of us have been born already, uh, so that we, we know that birth is, has happened, that's the past. That's what has happened, that's why we're here. And the result of the birth is this way, isn't it? We're in this form, which is, is like, a, it's a, like being uh, thrown out into a realm of sensitivity where we have to feel everything for as long as this body is conscious. We, we will feel what impinges, what touches it. Uh, sometimes when you're really mindful and, and concentrated in meditation, you get, I get the feeling, I get the image of, of like being a, of just one big open wound, like one big gash, open kind of gash in the, in the universe that that is so sensitive and feels all the time whatever the weather is, whatever happens, whatever you hear or see or smell or taste or touch. All these things uh, irritate, agitate, touch us, or, or aggravate us, agitate us. Uh, and this, this uh, sense of agitation and, and vulnerability is... What, what we call sensory consciousness. So in, when, when I have these, this, this kind of vision, I feel very compassionate. I feel a lot of compassion for all beings because you know that, that you can see why people are so desperate to try to, to, to protect themselves because this is an experience where we are vulnerable. We, we feel... Uh, everything it, it, and and I can see in my own life tendencies to try to escape from this sensitivity it's frightening to be sensitive it's it's better to not feel not to know things to to find a little place a little hole a cave or a protected environment or, where you can keep a measure of control where you feel that you're in control anyway uh, and the more violent unpleasant possibilities are are kept at bay, if you can kind of, uh, kind of create a, a womb-like atmosphere, an air-conditioned, centrally heated flat <laughs> with everything under control and uh, where, where you, your circle of friends are such that you, you know they're not going to upset you too much, may not make too many demands, not going to disappoint you. Uh, not going to betray you, uh, or if because you might have been betrayed or hurt or disappointed by people in the past, one can try to live alone with a nice cat or a, or a bird or a goldfish. Because they, uh, you have goldfish is, is something you can keep with you uh, in your flat. Cat, sometimes you have to let out in moments. But these... <laughs> But this way of, of keeping something that will that you, you feel safe and, and you can control and dominate. Because if we just leave ourselves open like a like a wound, an uncovered wound, unprotected, that image is, is rather gruesome. But in a way it, it it's a it's a good one to reflect upon because to me that's very much why we, we have so much fear. We tend to oftentimes take it very personally, like we shouldn't be frightened. There's something neurotic or something wrong with me as a person because if I were a normal, healthy man, you know, and, and my parents had been arahants instead of uh, ordinary kind of people, and, and if everything had been perfect and right, I wouldn't have the fears and problems that, that I have as a human being. It's, it's because... Uh, so, uh, and I've been damaged. Maybe there was, maybe there's something done to me. Maybe I was raped when I was two years old, and I can't remember it, or something. <laughs> All possibilities or previous life experiences. Maybe I was, uh, you know, burned at the stake, uh, or tortured, uh, or uh, by the Inquisition, or something or other. These are possibilities, but of ways of trying to explain the feelings or the, 
the fears, the anxieties the, uh, that we experience in this life. Say, when, when life isn't all that, when, when life is fairly safe and, and fairly controlled and fairly stable in a country like this. But also, there is this natural kind of instinctual sense of, of being in a, of wanting to protect and defend ourselves. It's instinctive, isn't it? All, all creatures have it. When you're, when you're born as a separate creature in, a, in, a, in, the, in the jungle, in this realm where the, you can be uh, brutalized or eaten or killed, exploited we we feel we feel we must protect ourselves and so that say is is a natural instinctual reaction to this state of vulnerability that we find ourselves in this sensitive state we're in we do have the ability like to like civilization or ways of forming groups to protect ourselves as tribes as as nations, we can we can make moral agreements not to kill each other. That murder is a is a criminal offence, and stealing is a criminal offence, and and rape and, and that is criminal offence, and and perjury and all these different things are uh, ways of of disrupting and causing division and and uh, fear in the society are are called criminal offenses and so we most of us try to live by the laws of the land by the and not necessarily the the moral laws but at least the, the civil laws and many of us try to live by the moral laws also and this gives us a, a, a feeling of security and safety but still in even when you're living in a, in a completely moral uh, community such as this one, there's still this, this kind of fear as a part of our instinctual fear, which we meditate on in, in, in Buddhist uh, meditation. We bring our attention to this fear, to this sense of, of anxiety or, or the sadness that one feels, a kind of, of uh, deep uh, sense of, of pathos that, that human beings have rather than merely interpreting it as a kind of neurotic hang-up or personal failure we begin to look at it as an experience of beginning to get in touch with it to, to notice it to learn how to accept it rather than to just shut it off or run away from it 